This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Cynthia Lyons, Naperville, Illinois. Beowulf, translated by Francis Barton Gamir, section 25. Under harness his heart then is hit indeed by sharpest shafts, and no shelter avails from foul behest of the hellish fiend. Him seems too little what long he possessed, greedy and grim, no golden rings he gives for his pride. The promised future forgets he and spurns with all God has sent him wonder-wielder of wealth and fame. Yet in the end it ever comes that the frame of the body fragile yields, faded falls, and there follows another who joyously the jewels divides, the royal riches, nor wrecks of his forbear. Ban, then, such baleful thoughts, Beowulf, dearest, best of men, and the better part choose, Prophet eternal, and temper thy pride, warrior famous, the flower of thy might lasts now a while, but ere long it shall be that sickness or sword thy strength shall minish, or fang of fire, or flooding billow, or bite of blade, or brandish spear, or odious age, or the eye's clear beam wax dull and darken. Death even thee in haste shall overwhelm thou hero of war so the ring danes these half years a hundred i ruled wielded neath welkin and warded them bravely from mighty ones many o'er middle earth from spear and sword till it seemed for me no foe could be found under fold of the sky lo sudden the shift to me seated secure came grief for joy when grendel began to harry my home the hellish foe for those ruthless raids unresting i suffered heart sorrow heavy heaven be thanked lord eternal for life extended that i on this head all hewn and bloody after long evil with eyes may gaze. Go to the bench now, be glad at banquet, warrior worthy. A wealth of treasure at dawn of day be dealt between us. Glad was the Geat's lord, going betimes, to seek his seat as the sage commanded, afresh as before, for the famed in battle for the band of the hall was a banquet dight nobly anew. The night helm darkened, dust o'er the drinkers. The doughty ones rose, for the hoary-headed would hasten to rest. Aged Schulding, and eager the git, shield-fighter sturdy, for sleeping yearned. Him wander-weary, warrior guest, from far a hall fane heralded forth, who by custom courtly cared for all, needs of a thane as in those of old days, warrior wanderers want to have. So slumbered the stout heart, stately the hall rose gabled in gilt, where the guests slept on, till a raven black the rapture of heaven blithe heart boded. Bright came flying, shine after shadow, the swordsmen hastened, Athlings all were eager homeward, forth to fare, and far from thence, the great-hearted guest would guide his keel. Bade then the hardy ones hunting be brought to the son of Etchlaf. The sword bade him take excellent iron, and uttered his thanks for it. Quoth that he counted it keen in battle, war friend winsome, with words he slandered not edge of the blade. T'was a big-hearted man, 
now eager for parting and armed at point warriors waited while went to his host that darling of danes the doughty atheling to high seat hastened and hrothgar greeted beowulf spoke bairn of egthau lo we seafarers say our will far come men that we fain would seek hijalak now we here have found hosts to our heart thou hast harbored us well if ever on earth i am able to win me more of thy love o lord of men aught anew than i now have done for work of war i am willing still if it come to me ever across the seas that neighbor foreman annoy and fright thee as they that hate thee erewhile have used thousands then of thanes i shall bring heroes to help thee of hijalak i know ward of his folk that though few his years the lord of the gates will give me aid by word and by work that well i may serve thee wielding the war-wood to win thy triumph and lending thee might when thou lackest men if thy hrethric should come to court of gates a sovereign son he will surely there find his friends a far-off land each man should visit who vaunts him brave him then answering hrothgar spake these words of thine the wisest god sent to thy soul no sager counsel from so young in years ere yet have i heard thou art strong of main and in mind art wary art wise in words i ween indeed if ever it hap that hrethel's heir by spear be seized by sword grim battle by illness or iron thine elder and lord people's leader and life be thine no seemlier man will the sea gates find at all to choose for their chief and king for hoard god of heroes if hold thou wilt thy kinsman's kingdom thy keen mind pleases me the longer the better beowulf loved thou hast brought it about that both our peoples sons of the geat and spear dane folk shall have mutual peace and from murderous strife such as once they waged from war refrain long as i rule this realm so wide let our hordes be common let heroes with gold each other greet o'er the gannet's bath and the ring prow bear o'er rolling waves tokens of love i true my land folk toward friend and foe are firmly joined and honor they keep in the olden way to him in the hall then half dane's son gave treasures twelve and the trust of earls bade him fare with the gifts to his folk beloved hail to his home and in haste return then kissed the king of kin renowned the Schulding's chieftain that choicest thane and fell on his neck fast flowed the tears of the hoary-headed heavy with winters he had chances twain but he clung to this that each should look on the other again and hear him in hall was this hero so dear to him his breast's wild billows he banned in vain safe in his soul a secret longing locked in his mind for that loved man burned in his blood then beowulf strode glad of his gold gifts the grass plot o'er warrior blithe the wave roamer bowed riding at anchor its owner awaiting as they hastened onward hrothgar's gift they lauded at length twas a lord unpeered every way blameless till age had broken it spareth no mortal his splendid might 
came now to ocean the ever courageous hardy henchmen their harness bearing woven war socks the warden marked trusty as ever the earl's return from the height of the hill no hostile words reached the guests as he rode to greet them but welcome he called to that wetter clan as the sheen mailed spoilers to ship marched on then on the strand with street steeds and treasure and armor their roomy and ring dight ship was heavily laden high its mast rose over hrothgar's hoarded gems a sword to the boat-guard Beowulf gave, mounted with gold, on the mead-bench since he was better esteemed, that blade-possessing heirloom old. Their ocean-keel boarding, they drove through the deep, and Daneland left. A sea-cloth was set, a sail with ropes, firm to the mast, the flood-timbers moaned, nor did wind over billows that wave swimmer blow across from her course the craft sped on foam necked it floated forth o'er the waves keel firm bound over briny currents till they got them sight of the geatish cliffs home known headlands high the boat stirred by winds on the strand up drove helpful at haven the harbor guard stood who long already for loved companions by the water had waited and watched afar he bound to the beach the broad-bosomed ship with anchor bands lest ocean billows that trusty timber should tear away then beowulf bade them bear the treasure gold and jewels no journey far was it thence to go to the giver of rings hygelac hrethling at home he dwelt by the sea-wall close himself and clan haughty that house a hero the king high the hall and higged right young wise and wary though winters few in those fortress walls she had found a home Hereth's daughter nor humble her ways nor grudge she gifts to the geatish men of precious treasure not thrith's pride showed she folk queen famed or that fell deceit was none so daring that durst make bold save her lord alone of the liegeman dear that lady full in the face to look but forged fetters he found his lot bonds of death and brief the respite soon as they seized him his sword doom was spoken and the burnished blade a baleful murder proclaimed and closed no queenly way for woman to practice though peerless she that the weaver of peace from warrior dear by wrath and lying his life should reeve but hemming's kinsmen hindered this for over their ale men also told that of these folk horrors fewer she wrought onslaughts of evil after she went gold-decked bride to the brave young prince atheling haughty and offa's hall o'er the fallow flood at her father's bidding safely sought where since she prospered royal throned rich in goods fain of the fair life fate had sent her and leal in love to the lord of warriors he of all heroes i heard of ever from sea to sea of the sons of earth most excellent seemed hence offa was praised for his fighting and feeing by far-off men the spear-bold warrior wisely he ruled over his empire ilmer woke to him help of heroes hemming's kinsman grandson of garmund grim in war hasten the hardy one henchmen with him sandy strand of the sea to tread and widespread ways 
the world's great candle sun shone from south they strode along with sturdy steps to the spot they knew where the battle king young his burg within slayer of ungentho shared the rings shelter of heroes to hijalak beowulf's coming was quickly told that there in the court the clansmen's refuge the shield companions sound and alive hail from the hero play homeward strode with haste in the hall by highest order room for the rovers was readily made by his sovereign he sat come safe from battle kinsman by kinsman his kindly lord he first had greeted in gracious form with manly words the mead dispensing came through the high hall hereth's daughter winsome to warriors wine-cup bore to the hands of the heroes hijalak then his comrade fairly with question plied in the lofty hall sore longing to know what manner of sojourn the sea-gates made what came of thy quest my kinsman beowulf when thy yearning suddenly swept thee yonder battle to seek o'er the briny sea combat in heroat hrothgar couldst thou aid at all the honored chief in his w wide known woes with waves of care my sad heart seethed i sore mistrusted my loved one's venture long i begged thee by no means to seek that slaughtering monster but suffer the south danes to settle their feud themselves with grendel now god be thanked that safe and sound i can see thee now beowulf spake the bairn of Edgethow. tis known and unhidden hijalak lord to many men that meeting of ours struggle grim between grendel and me which we fought on the field where full too many sorrows he wrought for the shielding victors evils unending these all i avenged no boast can be from breed of grendel any on earth for that uproar at dawn from the longest lived of the loathsome race in fleshly fold but first i went hrothgar to greet in the hall of gifts where halfdane's kinsman high renowned stood as my purpose was plain to him assigned me a seat by his son and heir the liegemen were lusty my life days never such merry men over mead in hall have i heard under heaven the high-born queen people's peace-bringer passed through the hall cheered the young clansmen clasps of gold ere she sought her seat to sundry gave off to the heroes hrothgar's daughter to earls in turn the ale-cup tendered she whom i heard these hall companions freawaru name when fretted gold she proffered the warriors promised is she gold-decked maid to the glad son of froda sage the seams to the shilding's friends kingdom's keeper he counts it wise the woman to wed so and ward off feud store of slaughter but seldom ever when men are slain does the murder speak sink but briefest while though the bride be fair nor haply will like it the heathabard lord and as little each of his liegemen all when a thane of the danes in that doughty throng goes with a lady along their hall and on him the old-time heirlooms glisten hard and ring-decked heathabard's treasure weapons that once they wielded fair until they lost it at the linden play liegemen leal and their lives as well then over the ale on this heirloom gazing some ash-wielder old 
who has all in mind that spear-death of men. He is stern of mood, heavy of heart. In the hero young tests the temper and tries the soul, and war-hate wakens with words like these. Canst thou not, comrade, ken that sword, which to the fray thy father carried in his final feud, neath the fighting mask, dearest of blades, when the Danish slew him, and wielded the war-place on Withergild's fall, after havoc of heroes, those hardy shildings. Now the son of a certain slaughtering Dane, proud of his treasure, paces this hall, joys in the killing, and carries the jewel that rightfully ought to be owned by thee. Thus he urges and eggs him all the time with keenest words, till occasion offers that Freowaru's thane for his father's deed, after bite of brand in his blood must slumber, losing his life, but that liegeman flies living away for the land he kens, and thus be broken on both their sides oaths of the earls when ingeld's breast wells with war-hate and wife-love now after the care-billows cooler grows so i hold not high the heathabard's faith due to the danes or their during love and pact of peace but i pass from that turning to grendel o giver of treasure and saying in full now how the fight resulted handfray of heroes when heaven's jewel had fled o'er far fields that fierce sprite came night foe savage to seek us out where safe and sound we sentried the hall to hanshu then was that harassing deadly his fall there was fated he first was slain girded warrior grendel on him turned murderous mouth on our mighty kinsmen and all of the brave's man body devoured yet none the earlier empty-handed would the bloody tooth murderer mindful of bale outward go from the gold-decked hall but me he attacked in his terror of might with greedy hand grasped me a glove hung by him wide and wondrous wound with bands and in artful wise it was all wrought by devilish craft of dragon skins me therein an innocent man the fiendish foe was fain to thrust with many another he might not so when i all angrily upright stood Twere long to relate how that land destroyer I paid in kind for his cruel deeds. Yet there, my prince, this people of thine got fame by my fighting. He fled away, and a little space his life preserved. But there stayed behind him his stronger hand left in Herod, heartsick thence on the floor of the ocean that outcast fell me for this struggle the shilding's friend paid in plenty with plates of gold with many a treasure when morn had come and we all at the banquet board sat down then was song in glee the gray-haired shilding much tested told of the times of yore whiles the hero his harp bestirred would of delight now lays he chanted of sooth and sadness, or said aright legends of wonder, the wide-hearted king. Or for years of his youth he would yearn at times for strength of old struggles, now stricken with age, hoary hero, his heart surged full, when wise with winters, he wailed their flight. 
thus in the hall the whole of that day at ease we feasted till fell o'er earth another night anon full ready in greed of vengeance grendel's mother set forth all doleful dead was her son through war-hate of wedders now woman monstrous with fury fell a foeman she slew avenging her offspring from asher old loyal counsellor life was gone nor might they even when morning broke those danish people their death-done comrade burn with brands on bale-fire lay the man they mourned under mountain stream she had carried the corpse with cruel hands for hrothgar that was the heaviest sorrow of all that had laden the lord of his folk the leader then by thy life besought me sad was his soul in the sea waves coil to play the hero and hazard my being for glory of prowess my guerdon he pledged i then in the waters tis widely known that sea-floor guardian savage found hand to hand there a while we struggled billows welled blood in the briny hall her head i hewed with a hardy blade from grendel's mother and gained my life though not without danger my doom was not yet then the haven of heroes halfdane's son gave me in guerdon great gifts of price so held this king to the customs old that i wanted for naught in the wage i gained the meed of my might he made me gifts halfdane's heir for my own disposal now to thee my prince i proffer them all gladly give them thy grace alone can find me favour few indeed have i of kinsmen save hygelac thee then he bade them bear him the boar-head standard in battle-helm high and breastplate grey the splendid sword then spake in form me this war-gear the wise old prince hrothgar gave and his hest he added that its story be straightway said to thee a while it was held by heragar king for long time lord of the land of schildings yet not to his son the sovereign left it to daring heroward dear as he was to him his harness of battle well hold thou it all and i heard that soon passed o'er the path of this treasure all apple fallow four good steeds each like the others arms and horses he gave to the king so should kinsmen be not weave one another the net of wiles or with deep hid treachery death contrive for neighbor and comrade his nephew was ever by hardy hygelac held full dear and each kept watch o'er the other's wheel i heard too the necklace to Higgid he presented, wonder-wrought treasure, which Walthau gave him, sovereign's daughter. Three steeds he added, slender and saddle-gay. Since such gift the gem gleamed bright on the breast of the queen. Thus showed his strain the son of Edgethau, as a man remarked for mighty deeds and acts of honor. At ale he slew not comrade or kin, nor cruel his mood, though of sons of earth his strength was greatest, a glorious gift that God had sent to the splendid leader. Long was he spurned and worthless by Geatish warriors held. Him at mead the master of clans failed full off to favor at all slack and shiftless the strong men deemed him profitless prince but payment came to the warrior honored for all his woes then the bulwark of earls 
bade bring within hardy chieftain hrethel's heirloom garnished with gold no geat e'er knew in shape of a sword a statelier prize the brand he laid in beowulf's lap and of hides assigned him seven thousand with house and high seat they held in common land alike by their line of birth inheritance home but higher the king because of his rule over the realm itself now further it fell with the flight of years with harryings horrid that hygelac perished and herdred too by hewing of swords under the shield wall slaughtered lay when him at the van of his victor folk sought hardy heroes hetho shilfings in arms o'erwhelming hereric's nephew then beowulf came as king this broad realm to wield and he ruled it well fifty winters a wise old prince warding his land until one began in the dark of night a dragon to rage in the grave on the hill a hoard it guarded in the stone barrow steep a straight path reached it unknown to mortals some man however came by chance that cave within to the heathen hoard in hand he took a golden goblet nor gave he it back stole with it away while the watcher slept by thievish wiles for the warden's wrath prince and people must pay betimes end of section twenty nine